are not necessary anymore. Or says things like, you can have the sacraments or not have the sacraments, you're still giving glory to God. Because that is what our modernist Novus Ordo Catholic Church is saying. And they're behaving like that all the time. Yes, you can have your baptism, communion, confession, all the rest of that, but these other people who don't even believe in those things are worshiping the same God, so they have the same chance as you do for getting to heaven. That's all. And that's not what our Lord Jesus Christ told us. He gave us the sacraments. He said, you don't have baptism, you're not getting to heaven. Here's my flesh and blood. If you don't eat and drink it, you're not, you have no life in you. Our Lord told us how necessary the sacraments are. And now we've got leaders of the church telling us, Sacraments are not sacraments, you're giving the same glory to God. What a lie. And what a blasphemy against our Lord Jesus Christ. So some of us have taken a few steps back and said, wait, wait, wait. This is an error. And I don't claim to be better than those people out there, but I do want to say that our Lord Jesus Christ deserves the honor for the sacraments and the life of grace which he gave us. And if that means that where I go back to confirmation and it seems kind of boring compared to them being slain in the spirit with their baptism of the spirit and whatever else they have, then let's be boring. I don't care. What I do care about is that the reality of the sacraments and the reality of the life of grace be respected. And that's the sacrament of confirmation. It came from the apostles. It's still being done today. It's the same reality. On the day of the first Pentecost, let's say the first Christian Pentecost, because it was already a Jewish observance just before it became more well known to us as a Christian observance. On the day of the first Pentecost, St. Peter spoke to the masses, you know, a multitude of people, and 3,000 people were converted in one day from the Jewish religion to Christianity and he baptized them and he told them they had to be baptized and do penance which they did and it wasn't just a few weeks later and St. Peter converted another 2,000 people doing the same thing so you know I received confirmation probably back in the 1970s and I must admit to you I've never preached in such a way that I've converted 3,000 people in one day and 2,000 people on another day. But the same reality is happening. Whether through a Christian layman or a Christian who is a priest, the life of grace is passing through us. The divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ is in our soul. And that's transforming us into men of God all the time. And it's transforming the people around us into people that are convinced of the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ and people who are convinced of the necessity of the life of grace in souls that comes to us through baptism and Holy Communion and confession and confirmation and all the rest of the sacraments. That's happening in us. And just because we don't see the big spectacular show with the wind and the tongues and the, and the 3,000 people converted, just because we don't see that happening does not mean that the same reality is not there. The same reality is there. The life of grace in the soul. And from our soul, it's going to other souls. And whether it be one person or 3,000 persons, in a way, it's kind of the same thing because we're talking about infinite realities. You know, if my soul is in heaven, giving glory to God someday, that would be a wonderful thing. There's something infinite about that. If 3,000 souls are in heaven someday giving glory to God, in a way it's kind of the same thing. Because they're giving glory to the same God who is infinite as the person by himself giving glory to God who is infinite. Infinite is only one, you know. You can't have several infinites. It's getting kind of abstract, but that is the idea. So. Uh, dear friends, have confidence in this life of grace which transforms a man in the sacrament of confirmation. Such that the um, sacrament of confirmation is never repeated. Because once transformed in the Holy Ghost, you are always transformed in the Holy Ghost. You don't repeat.
repeated. Baptism is not repeated because once you are made a son of God, an heir of heaven, along with our Lord Jesus Christ, your brother, that does not need and should not be repeated. And the other sacrament which is like that is the priesthood. Once a man is made into a co-sacrificer with our Lord Jesus Christ, that does not need to be repeated. I know we live in a world of relativism, where the big shots in our church want to downplay the sacraments, and they want to add more and more emphasis all the time to one big humanity that all worships the same God, with or without doctrine. Oh, it's horrible. But that's exactly what they're trying to do, now for 60 years at least. So they've been a lot, let's say, the, the floodgates of this heretical behavior have been opened only for the last 60 years. But it has been going on, it was going on before that. Downplay the doctrine and emphasize um, how all these religions are all somehow good and all worshiping the same God. It's a very unfortunate thing. It has taken the glory away from the Holy Eucharist and from confirmation and from baptism. It really has. But even though we live in a world that does that sort of thing, I think the Holy Ghost has spoken in a special manner to all of us to say, wait, let's, let's just hold up, hold on uh, while the rest of the world goes crazy with uh, this false teaching, even inside of the Catholic Church. And let's get back to the spiritual realities which emphasize the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ and which emphasize the life of grace and the means whereby he gives us this life of grace. Let's just hold back, hold up a little bit and go back to these basic things. And that's, what's make, that's what makes you traditional Catholics. You're sort of people that say, you know, look, I know the rest of the world is kind of going crazy with this ecumenism and all the rest of it, but this is not what sanctified people when I was a kid. Well, this is not what sanctified my parents and my grandparents. What was wrong with that back then? That was a great thing. That filled the churches and that built churches. I'm not going to abandon that just because I've got people getting carried away with sensational things. Uh, so let's be grateful to our Lord and let's be grateful to our Blessed Mother uh, who have spoken especially to our souls to say, let's recognize the spiritual reality of the sacrament of confirmation, uh, which transforms the soul and transforms the world around that soul. So we had the crowning of our Blessed Mother before Mass today, because this is her month, the month of May. Uh, it's especially given to her because we've all spent um, 40 days in fast, in fasting with our Lord. And then May uh, belongs to the Blessed Mother because it's the time after the fast. Also, this is the time where Our Lady begins to guide the church after her son has ascended into heaven. And then uh, a lot of the things in the church are based on the city of Rome, so that's the northern hemisphere and all of its climate and seasons and so forth. The month of May is known to be the time when the things come alive in nature again. The plants are alive, the trees are alive, the flowers are alive. Uh, and the Blessed Virgin Mary is the beginning of our supernatural life. Mm -hmm. With her, grace came into the world again. In the month of May, life comes back into nature. So just as in the month of May, we're, we focus on nature coming back to life again, in the month of May, we focus on our Blessed Mother giving the life of grace to souls again. For that reason, we crown Our Lady at the beginning of Mass. At the end of Mass, or after Mass, we will have the enrollment in the brown scapular, or the scapular of Mount Carmel, for whoever in this church 
uh, needs to have that done. Very quickly, um, the brown scapular comes from St. Simon's stock, I think around the year 1100, when the Carmelites were formed. And uh, there was, back in the day, there used to be kind of rivalry and persecution between religious orders, because that was a great, it was a big part of society back then. It's like one bank having rival against the other bank. Nowadays, everything is capitalism and money. Uh, back then, uh, the, the supernatural life was more of the issue. So there would be rivalry between the religious orders and the, and the what's the name? The Carmelites were quite persecuted. So Saint Simon Stock, who was the superior general, he was on the verge of saying, "That's enough. We're finished. We're too persecuted." And our blessed mother gave him the scapula. Uh, she said, "With this, you will have." success in this life and you will have supernatural life which brings you to heaven so with the scapular the carmelite order survived and then our lady gave the promise she said whoever dies wearing this scapular will never go to hell and so that's why we wear the scapular we don't want to go to hell but we want to have the supernatural life um, flourishing and vanquishing in our soul And of course, if we don't wear the scapular in a superstitious sort of way, I put the scapular on, and because I have this on, I won't go to hell. It's more like I put on the scapular, and then this scapular is giving me the grace to be a Marian soul. So it's going to inspire me to pray the rosary. And by praying the rosary, I'm going to be inspired to live a life of grace so I can receive Holy Communion. And by receiving Holy Communion, I'll have the strength to resist sin. But everything's starting with the scapula. So wear the scapular and wear it faithfully. That's what brings sanctification to your soul. Once you are enrolled in the scapular, uh, you never need to bless your scapular again. I think it's normal if you have a scapular, usually within one year or two years, it deteriorates and it's time for a new scapula. Very well. Obtain a new scapular and put it on, it's already blessed just by the fact that you are enrolled in the scapula. That's the ceremony that we'll go through today at the end of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.